Hello all. So the other day I was watching a, um, a YouTube video by Nova Novara Media called Will Star Will Starmer Privatizing the UK question mark. And it's about a the farmer's reaction to a meeting between Keir Starmer and BlackRock. Uh, it's presented by Michael Walker was a presenter on the show and he had Brett Christopher's in to do some commentary who is the uh, um who's the author of this book called Our Lives in Their Portfolios. So generally what it was about was the farmer's concern and many other people's concern that the government is trying to get them to sell off land on the cheap so it can be snatched up by um, BlackRock or other asset management type companies. Now there's a couple of things about this video which I thought it's worth commenting on, hence this video. And, um, and I think it's important, well let me play, there's two clips I've got because there's two th things I want to comment on. One is a substance of the video, i.e. BlackRock buying up all the land, which I'll come to in a minute. And the, but the first one is this bit here. Let me play this meeting seemed to be particularly annoying to the right. Of course, the right generally aren't too fussed about privatisation. Well, partly it's because the timing of the meeting fits well into a theory which has become popular among farmers protesting changes to inheritance taxes, or at least the sort of right-wing elements um, in those protests. Now, some of them believe the reason Labour has closed tax loopholes is so small farms are sold to international capitalists like BlackRock and also um, the theory goes like Bill Gates. Now, George Galloway tweeted this on November the 17th, so four days before Starmer's meeting with Fink. Okay, so the bit I don't like about this part really, and I think this should be a point that our friends at Novera Media and particularly Michael Walker should take note of. It's the kind of sneering, condescending attitude about talking about people on the right. Now there's nothing um, right wing about the farmer's concern. It's genuine concerns about, you know, what might happen to their business. I'll come to that, like I said, I'll come to that in a minute. But I would ask that it's, um, it's a bit old hat, right? It's a bit passe to be seeing the world through his lens of right wing and left wing and identity politics. I think it's important that you recognise, people at Novera Media, that you recognise that people, farmers, have genuine concerns about losing their family businesses due to having to pay a tax. It's not a loophole, it's a tax they have to pay, which they didn't previously have to pay. Not for any loophole, but because the government can take your possessions from you at force and at law and put you in prison if you don't give them to, to them. And this may destroy many, many farms which are inherited businesses and they are businesses and they're very, you know, a farm worth three million pounds may only generate 50,000 pounds income, even less. So, and you can't really set, and selling off part of your farm like 10, 20% of your farm will make that whole farm enterprise completely inviolable. So that's their concern. And anyone would have the same concern, right? It's not like you're inheriting a bucket full of cash that you go and buy, buy Lamborghinis with. That is not the case. So anyway, less of the sneering, less of the condescending attitude towards people on the right. I think it's important that we work consciously to bring the country together and to bring different elements of the country together in order to find optimum and good solutions. Now, to the second part, so hopefully that's clear. Now to the second part of my complaint, for want of a better word, which deals with the substance of the video, which is about black rock and um, inheriting land, etc. So let's watch the next clip. Just put me the cans on. And let's talk about the specific reaction to Keir Starmer's meeting with Larry Fink on Twitter, because obviously you're from the left and you're critical of, of black rock. There's also many theories on the right as to why this was very problematic. And in particular, there are lots of people suggesting that the reason the Labour Party closed a tax loophole on farmers 
was so that they would then sell up and companies like BlackRock would be able to swoop in and buy that farmland. Um, now, I want to know, from your perspective, is that theory at all plausible? See, the way you present this already, they're swooping and buy that farmland, attitude on the right, is that condescending attitude again, right? It's that... It's that um, attitude that I am better than thou and that thou is really stupid, right? It's like, you know, it's crazy. Don't, don't do it. Let's carry on. So that strikes me as being a classic case of a kind of absurd conspiracy theory. Um, um, I mean, I think if nothing else, it, that, that requires belief. Right. That's the issue I got with that one. The the opinion that is that absurd conspiracy theory that BlackRock may be swooping in to buy up land, and why that I I to well, so the reason why I think that's not an absurd conspiracy theory, and the answer to that to that question properly is firstly to understand what BlackRock is and what their business model is, right? And I know about this stuff because I worked in worked in this kind of area quite a few times. So BlackRock is a asset management company, and what that means is that they manage financial assets. They don't really manage assets like houses, cars, whatever you know, diamonds and jewels and whatever. They don't manage assets in that sense, like like fixed assets. They manage financial assets. Um, so these are things like shares debt, bonds, guilts. Um, they also do risk management, but it's all about financial risk management. It's not necessarily about you know going down a coal mine and doing a, doing a risk review. Um, so that's their business model. What they don't do is, is um, manage what you might call fixed assets. They won't manage farms, they won't manage um, houses, they won't manage you know car fleets or whatever, right? That's not their game. Their game is to manage assets and manage financial assets in particular. Where this crosses over, so where people are, should be concerned, is that is in the financialization of businesses. And what that means is you can take a business which is producing, I don't know, in retail, or producing cars, or a business like a, um, a care home business, such as Southern Cross Healthcare was 15 years ago or so, and you can financialize that business. And what does that mean? That means you got, you put that business in some way in financial debt or financial obligation to somebody somebody else, to, to BlackRock, for example. And that can be done a number of ways. So one of the ways you can make a business financially obliged to you is by buy a lot of their shares, right? Their PLC, you just buy a bunch of their shares. And every PLC is duty bound to run their business for the benefit of the shareholders. And shareholders basically means you have a right, when you talk about shareholding, you don't really own the business, right? You own a percentage of the profits which are distributed. So, um, you know, that's what shareholding does. The other way of financializing a business is by is by purchasing their, their fixed assets and leasing them or renting them or, well, yeah, basically releasing them back to the business. And that's what happened with, with um, Southern Cross Healthcare about 15 years ago. So Southern Cross Healthcare was one of the country's, the UK's largest healthcare providers uh, for care homes. And they owned dozens of care homes throughout the country. Um, and what the, what the asset management company that associated with them done, so you know, they, they uh, decided in their wisdom, Southern Cross Healthcare, to engage the service of that asset management company. That asset management company, which is called Blackstone Asset Management, which is also mentioned, in his video, by the way, Blackstone, not to be mixed up with Black Rock. Um, Blackstone brought all their care homes off them for you know X amount of million pounds, probably a couple of hundred million pounds, whatever it was. Brought those care homes off them and then leased them back to the company. So the company, um, Southern Cross Healthcare, already owned these homes. They had no obligation on these homes and the asset management company took those, financialized it, by offering it back to them in terms of, of leasing. And then, you know, gave them the hundreds of millions of pounds for those homes in the first place, which that company didn't keep 
in order to pay off those leases, which has been like, why would you do that anyway? It's just a weird thing to do. The directors of that company distributed the, that money amongst shareholders and to themselves for bonuses. Consequently, a couple of years later, Southern Cross Healthcare ran out of money and couldn't afford leases anymore, so folded and the NHS had to take over their financial obligations. So that's what it means to financialize a, a business. Now, the concern of farmers is that they're being forced to sell their land cheap and it might destroy their business, as I spoke, spoke about earlier, um, because it may be unviable if they have to sell 10%, 20% of their, of their farmland. But then the question, is, the question this guy said is a conspiracy theory that BlackRock would buy it up. Well, BlackRock wouldn't necessarily buy it up by the land themselves, but they may well buy the financialized aspects of that land. So for example, if this land comes on market cheap, um, it will make opportunities for other people to buy that land. So borrow the money from BlackRock and buy all that land and always do, you know, do something with it. And um, what that do something with it will look like because it's a financialized asset. So BlackRock will be pushing to, for, to maximize the return on that asset, the financial return on that asset. So this will be turned into, you know, high kind of intensive farming to maximize profit whilst reducing costs as much as possible. And British farming is very high cost when you compare it to say American farming, because it's all just kind of big factories and bunning warehouses and what have you. It's kind of battery chickens, but also done with cows and pigs and everything else. Um, you know, cattle and everything. So that's where the farmers fear it, it's going to go. And it probably will go that direction. And it's not a conspiracy theory because this stuff has happened before. It's happened in America and it's happened to other countries around the world. It's currently happening in, in Ukraine. Is that, you know, the land is being bought up by large investment houses in order to financialize that land as they give it to high intent or sell it or lease it or loan it or mortgage it to high intensity farmers so that's what it's all about and that's what's going to happen and it's a genuine concern and genuine worry so no road or media you should treat it like a genuine concern and genuine genuine worry and not treat it as it's a condescending thing and battle or political thing between left and right the Right, so talking about that right, right wing piece, the right wing, as you call it, believe in free markets, free trade, um, you know, adding value into the economy, adding value into the country, adding value through innovation, through building things, through making things. You know, if you listen to Donald Trump, he's always talking about manufacturing and making things, and America doesn't make enough stuff. Tucker Carlson, same thing. Elon Musk, same thing. None of these people who support Donald Trump on the right are financial asset managers or financial architects. They are people who want to run businesses to make cars, to make you know corner shop businesses, uh, make space rockets, make whatever, make media shows. Right? They're making stuff. They're not just buying assets and leasing them to people or buying shares. You know, no one who buys shares makes anything other than a profit or a loss. Um, even a company who sells the shares don't make anything when you buy shares from someone else who owns those shares that isn't the company. Or at, a point, at post point of initial offering, right? The company don't get any of that money. So it's all just about maximizing profit for nothing, for no, no productive or real economic gain. gain. Um, and that's a concern of the right, and it should be a concern of the left as well. And I think it is, you know, I think it is a concern of the left, apart from Keir Starmer, who thinks by reef by financializing the country will give him some sort of, you know, what does that give Keir Starmer? It will give Keir Starmer a bunch of money that he can spend on hospitals. So for example, he could financialize the NHS. And that would give him a bunch of money that he could spend on building some new hospitals, etc. Except then the um, asset management push will be to cut costs, cut costs, cut costs in healthcare and um, raise up prices in order to maximize a financial return. So that's when you go into a hospital and you get, you don't get the, you know, you get a heart valve replacement. You don't get a really high quality, good one. You get the cheap one that's made in Hong Kong that someone pulled out of a Christmas cracker. 
Right, that's where it will go if you financialize the healthcare system. That's why America, where it's a financialized, pretty much a financialized healthcare system, there's insurance there as well and what have you. So it's, it's not clear cut, but it's, it is very much a financialized healthcare system. And that's why it's one of the most expensive healthcare system systems in the world, but has one of the you know worst outcomes in the world of a you know a sophisticated healthcare system when you measure it by longevity of the people who live in that country or average average age of life I suppose or whatever it is. Um, so this idea of financialization is a very toxic thing to a country, very toxic thing to the innovation and very toxic thing to running a business and producing stuff because the finance people suck out all the lifeblood of the business, all the value out of the business. They sweat the asset and drain the value. Okay, I love love Nova Oda Media, by the way. I like, you know, um, all the presenters on there and the shows that I do. I do, you know, I'm a bit of left-winger myself, right? I was always voted Labour until this last election. Um, and uh, um, so, you know, like the shows, but let's, but my big message is, let's try and work together with the right in order to create a better country and a better politics. Stop the identity stuff, stop the sneering and sniggering stuff, respect people's, respect people's worries and pe people's views. Put yourselves in their shoes, Sh show some compassion. Okay, so that is about it, I think. So, um, Brett Christopher's book, by the way, is Our Lives in Their Portfolios. Probably worth a read, I have read it myself, but you know, there you go. And Michael Walker, less of sneering, please. You're not at school now. And um, good luck. Ciao.